Okay, so my name is Neil. I'm an identical twin and I have neurofibromatosis type 1. Hi, my name is Adam Pearson. I have type 1 neurofibromatosis and an identical twin. <laughs> twins, it's been fascinating. They've always been very combative. I mean, do you plan on winning anytime soon? You're like a dog chasing a fire truck. You're never going to get there. Come on, let's hustle! Oh! Sorry. Let's see that. Yeah. The boys are both supposed to be in bed. My neighbour rings the doorbell. She says to me, do you know your boys are out on the flat roof? And that's the sort of thing I had to put up with. There you go. Now, my husband very sensibly labelled. <laughs> put labels on them in this one. I noticed something, when he used to eat, sometimes that side of his face used to redden up. I took him to the doctors and they said, no, no, it's fine, it's a blocked salivary gland. I was messing about in the bedroom, probably pretending to be Hulk Hogan or something, and just banged my head on the windowsill. And it, it came up in like a bump. And we just figured, boys we boys, let's put some, an ice pack on this and it will go down. But then you did it again, didn't you, a few weeks later? Yeah, yeah. Banged it again and it came up in a bigger bump. And that bump never went away. And so then we started going to doctors and asking questions. And eventually, um, when I was five, got the, the um, diagnosis of neurofibromatosis. My mother was told, and I, I was very much in the room, that the... the I would grow, the tumours won't, and by the time I was 18, I'd look like everyone else. I was always aware that I'd had the same condition as him, but also fully aware that he had the facial disfigurement and that I didn't. is so visual, I'm very rarely invisible. Like kind of walking down down the street, people kind of can kind of stare. And then the camera phones and stuff start to come out and the name calling, you know, Quasimodo, the elephant man, all, all the kind of disfigured bad guy victim tropes. That used to really rattle me as a teenager. And it gets to a point where you kind of, you know, embrace it. He's an extremely confident person, whereas I felt it rather than trying to tell other people off. I kind of took a step back. What I didn't want to do was make things worse for him. And that isn't a problem for me, it's a problem for everyone else. And everyone else's problem then becomes my problem. I think bullying is probably one of the worst things a human can do to another human. There was this one time where I was at school and one of the, one of the kids said, oh, the teacher wants to see you in a classroom. And I went into this classroom and just got completely ambushed by like a bunch of kids. They shoved me around a bit, spat on me a bit. And then I kind of come running out of the classroom. Um, and unfortunately, I hate talking about this. I'm, I'm not going to talk about it anymore after this. Um, the school sort of blamed him, which is what schools do, don't they? It, it was unbelievable. 
Um, and I do, you know, I have a heavy heart when I think about that. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. I've got very few neurofibroma above the neckline, so no facial disfigurement as a result. It's kind of weird. I kind of know what I'd look like if it wasn't for an app. As a child, I was there thinking that I'd got off the lighter of the two of us. We all thought Neil had gone away with that, you know, that nothing was going to happen and he was going to be fine. And then when he was 14, he went out one evening to a youth club, came back and didn't know where he'd been and what he'd done. And so rather than having the, uh, the disfigurement and the, the visible fibromas, he has short-term memory loss. When I first lost my memory, there were questions that I was asking, like what day it was, three and four times a day, I remember one time being asked to take something upstairs about three or four times, and lo and behold, it was still on the stairs. I was incredibly scared. He does apply for other jobs, but people don't want... He never gets, um, gets them. People perhaps don't want the bother or maybe I'm being unkind, I don't know, or they don't understand how someone with no short-term memory could actually do a job. If Neil does something often enough, he will remember. I always sort of say to people, he has to work twice as hard to achieve half as much. And then a year later, he developed epilepsy. The first fit I ever had was actually in my sleep, in a hotel, and being told that Adam had said that I'd been making swinging movements in my sleep and wasn't responsive. And that's, that's how it's been. And, you know, they just can't get him seizure free. This is the, the bizarre thing about um, NF, which is why all this research is really important. But there's no kind of one-size-fits-all model. Everybody gets affected differently and everybody has to deal with it as best they can. There's this word that gets kind of thrown around a lot of being normal. And it just sends shivers up my spine. Because who wants to be normal? Who on career day at school just looked their teacher in the face and went, just want to be average, just plain old vanilla? That's what I want, miss. No. Right now we're at my uh, college where I did my A-levels. This is where things kind of turn around from secondary school. This is where I've tried to stop being cool and kind of be me, if that makes sense. It's where I kind of realised in my whole life trying to be someone I'm not. So I just thought, kind of, let's just be the best me I can be and do what I feel like is the right thing. Adam Pearson has a rare disease which left his face covered with non-cancerous tumours. He's an inspiration and he joins us now live from London. A very good morning to you, Adam. I think people are more aware now than they were, and I think most of that is because of the twins themselves, and particularly Adam's ability to communicate and to overcome such obvious disability. In a really messed up way, and that has been the making of me. With, without it, I reckon I'd be a, a shell of the person I am. Well, we need to say big smile. I have a happy life, I have a full-time job that's well paid, and if a fit happens, it happens, so be it. It's not gonna get me down. You've gotta live the life you've got, rather than pondering over the life that you wanted. 
they carry their disabilities with very broad shoulders. You know, they never make a meal of it and they're never self-pitying or anything. You know, this is what's happened and we'll embrace it and move on. Marilyn, their mother, has really devoted her life to this and has helped them to achieve so much. It doesn't matter what happens to you with your children, it's not the end of the world. There is always a way. Currently there is no cure right now. So I think it's significant that we do keep pushing the research forward so that we can find a cure. And I think NF, no NF, everyone has the ability to change the world in their own way. So I think we need to, you know, help people go out and change it.